Hear me out. I usually say coffee should not be a luxury, and I truly believe in that. Yet, I bought this. Should you buy it too? Today you'll find out. Let's go. The Acaya Lunar is an espresso scale that was launched in 2015 with a revised version in 2021, which is the one I have here. It was positioned as one of the best and most expensive scales in the market, where you can find pretty good and totally functional scales for 70, 60, 50, even $10. This Apple-inspired, I will say, gadget sells 25 times more at a hefty price of $250. That is literally half the price of my espresso machine. But why is this coffee scale so expensive? What is the difference compared to other coffee scales? Can I use it with other women? Why should I pay $250 for this? Why not buy a cheaper scale instead? Would you make a coffee better? Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, we're gonna answer all of the questions, but one at a time, please. What makes the Akaya Lunar so expensive? Let's start with the exterior characteristics. It is made out of anonized aluminum instead of plastic, as most scales are. There's also the design. Contrary to most scales, the Akaya has an inverted design, where the plate is folded on top of the tray, and this prevents leakage of water and protects all the electronic components and the LED display as well. And of course, this means that the scale is water resistant. So I wanted to test the water resistance, and I discovered that the material is also hydrophobic, so that's another plus. Akaya has made it very portable. With dimensions of only 105 mm by 105 mm, it's perfect for dosing, espresso extraction, and even, you know, for your latte cups. The other part that I really enjoy is that it's only 15 mm high. That means that I can actually put it under my drip tray on my Gadget Classic Pro and you are most likely going to be able to use it on any espresso machine you have. The size is also a downside because when you're brewing with other methods, it can be too small, but then you have to decide what's best for you depending on what you do most. Now let's talk about technicalities. The scale comes with three accessories. First is a calibration weight, which is 100 grams. This is a heat resistance pad, which will help you prevent overheating, especially when you're doing other brewing methods other than espresso. It also comes in very handy with your porta filter, just placing it like so. And the last thing, is that it comes with a USB-C cable. The last version of the scale also came with a rechargeable, but now this one is more universal. As you can see, I haven't even opened mine because I have a lot of USB-C cables just lying around in my home. So that may be the case for you as well. It also will help you save in buying batteries and replacing every other day. The battery should last for 27 to 30 hours of use, which is a long time. You can, however, check the battery levels just by doing this. In my case, I just tend to plug it in once a week, just for safety. Something that also adds value to the Akaya is the fact that it has six different weighing modes, and I'm just gonna quickly show you what they are. The first one is simple weighing mode, nothing fancy. The second one is a dual display. You have your timer and you also have your weight. You do have to initiate the timer though. The third mode is the droplet. As soon as it senses the first drop of espresso, it will start to count the timer. Pretty cool, huh? The fourth mode is my favorite one. It's the same as last one. However, it also will tear the cup when it detects the solid weight. So as soon as you put your weight goes to zero, then it starts to count again when it senses the liquid. It stops when the espresso stops flowing. Love it. The fifth one is the same as the last two, but also considerates the pre-infusion time. If you have an espresso machine with stable pre-infusion time, you're gonna love this one. The last mode is an auto tear. In a very heavy commercial setting, I see it working perfectly. You are just pulling shots one after the other. As soon as you put a stable weight, it goes to zero. So you just need to see the flow and you will remove, right? For home use, I don't find it as useful, uh, but that's just me. You can remove it from the options if you want to. Just do what makes sense for you. Something funny that happened to me the first time I used the scale for a pour over. In my mind, I thought if I do the droplet with the auto tear, that would be perfect, right? But I didn't take into consideration that as soon as I bloomed and it reached my weight, it teared. So I basically lost all of my progress thus far. Uh, now I am using the dual display mode and that takes me to the next thing, which is the app. I use the Brewmaster app and I can connect via Bluetooth. As you can see here, the little thing. And when you are using this application, you can start and lock a brew. When you are here in the screen, if you choose auto start, 
As soon as you start pouring your water, it will also begin the timer on the actual scale and it will log all of your flow rates, which is absolutely amazing. It also serves as a nice journal for tasting. You can put uh, which beans you use, what was the proportion of water, and the settings of the grind size you used. Everything will be there, and even a flavor will, so you can choose like what tasted like, put any notes. If you are on a tasting journey, that's gonna be amazing for you. The issue is that there are just too many apps, and most of them, if you ask me, I didn't actually enjoy. Um, the Brewmaster I stuck with because I find it nice and functional, but the others, really, why? But you do you, download them all, use them for a bit, and if you like them and if you're enjoying them, then you keep them. But what really sets the Akaya Lunar apart, what makes it a $250 scale, it's performance. And I'm gonna test it and compare with a cheaper scale. But before we jump into that, if you're getting value from this video, please like it and subscribe to my channel so I can keep on making content and providing coffee knowledge for you. What's the difference between the Akaya Lunar and any other cheaper scale? When it comes to reaching the right weight, there's really no difference, right? Now it's how you get there, both the accuracy and the responsiveness of the scale. Usually when you're using a cheaper scale, you will have delays in the time it gets for you to actually see the results. That you're getting. The Akaya Lunar has a response time very impressive, only 20 milliseconds. It is so sensitive that it, you can even see the changing weight as the water evaporates. So when you're extracting espresso, for example, that has such a short brew time, you need it to respond quickly. In my case, for example, I found myself when I'm brewing with a pour over that I was usually just putting more water than I needed to and my hand was just used to it. And when I got this scale, is when I noticed I was putting a lot of water. I was really not okay. But I didn't know because I had such a delay with the other scale I was using previously. See this test on the speed of both scales. That flow rate detection capacity is outstanding on the Akaya Lunar, but when you compare with another scale, you can see that it takes some time for it to give you the number. That's time that you may be overdosing or really going off your ratio. The other part is the accuracy level. Usually, most coffee scales will claim to be able to weigh out of a tenth of a gram. However, it's not always as true. With this one, you can even change the sensitivity in the settings to be up to 0.01 grams. Absolutely outstanding. You can measure a feather. I really like to test the accuracy with just one single coffee bean and see if it's able to detect it. As you can see here, the difference is pretty clear. That matters. Can you use the Akaya scale with other brewing methods? It's widely sold as espresso scale, and that's mainly because of its size. Fits under a tray, it's perfect for espresso cup, it's perfect for dosing. They even sell you a separate accessory for weighing your portafilter. But it does work with other brewing methods. In my case, I use a size 01 carafe for my Hario V60, and I do find that using the height of the heating pad also helps so that the carafe is not touching the screen. But with other things like my Chemex, it becomes a little bit difficult. Depending on what you use on a daily basis and the size of your carafe, it may or may not be a good idea for you to get this scale. They have other options. For example, the Pearl is widely sold as a pour over scale. I'm gonna add some links in the description for this and the other options in case you still haven't made your choice. So who should buy the Akaya Lunar scale? It is definitely made for a commercial environment. High volume, extended use, a cafe can completely justify the cost of the scale. Personally, I love it. It has changed my workflow, it makes my life easier, it has improved my game. If you have already spent thousands of dollars on your coffee setup, what is another couple hundred? But if you're just starting out, I don't think you should buy it. You can still weigh out your beans and get your output with a cheaper scale and maybe invest in something else. And you're probably wondering, will this scale make your coffee better? Using any scale will help you make better coffee, but it doesn't justify the high price of the Akaya Lunar. It will improve your workflow, but to make better coffee in general, you have to master the basics. And I wanna teach you how to do that. You only need to click on any of these videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you there.